It's still midday life and it's now time for us to do business. We're talking about Ghana's slipping of some 11 points of the Global Competitiveness Report. And according to the Executive Opinion and Global Competitiveness Report, the environment for doing business here in Ghana in 2012 was far better than this year. The country went down 11 places from 103 to, that was in 2012 to 114 place in the latest Global Business Competitiveness Index released by the World Economic Forum. And joining us on the line this afternoon to look at its implications, we have Dr. Kweku Safu, who is an international economist. Good afternoon to you, sir, and thanks for joining us on Midday Live. Okay. Now, let's look at Ghana dropping 11 places. What do, does this really mean to the economy? Yeah. Well, it, it's all about confidence and the prospects of investments uh, within the economy from outside, mostly foreign investments. And it means that uh, a few things have gone wrong or we were higher somehow. Uh, I think the major components of, of this drop is probably due to the energy crisis that we experienced uh, in recent times, uh, the water crisis also. And the general infrastructure status of our, of our country and, uh, is becoming weak and weak. So the, these factors contribute a lot in what uh, investors look for when they want to begin new enterprises in uh, developing countries such as ours. But the larger problem is also the education and the skills that we need to acquire in this country to make, it, to make investments you know, really uh, attract, attracted to, to our economy. You know, if you take the case of India and Singapore and some other Turkey and so on and so forth, mm. But there's a whole range of well-educated skills that is needed in the 21st century in the IT sector in terms of engineering and technology, geology, and so on and so forth. And I, I don't think our educational system is coping very well with the production of these important skills that are needed in the 25th century uh, world economy. And okay. And if you see the businesses that have been ceded to India and Indonesia and Thailand and so on, it's all reflected in the fact that they have these skills available at a cheaper rate. Okay. And uh, you, we should understand this. And I think these are some of the things that we need to tackle mm. quickly to now, attract the right investment. Now, Dr. Safi, you've mentioned reasons why we moved from... We moved 11 places down, talking about energy yeah. crisis and water crisis. But what, let's look at its implications. What yeah. would be the implications? Let's look at transacting business and also getting foreign direct investments around the world. Yeah, yeah the implication is that, I mean, uh, economy, uh, it affects, uh, I mean, the growth of our economy and especially the development of our economy. I, I, a lot of the things that investors, prospective investors have also mentioned is, is the snail pace, you know, processing of their applications. And sometimes the corrupt uh, corruptive uh, influences here and there, people demanding upfront at various stages that investors should pay certain money before they push through their documents and so And we should face this squarely and not hide, you know, and I say these things exist. They exist. A lot of investors I have talked to have mentioned this as one of the key obstacles uh, okay. when you want to process the document, whether it's the lands or this ministry or that ministry, you know, there's a snail pace approach and uh, trying to sort of extract some money from you before you are pushed on to the next idea. And, and I think the government should be serious and tackle this because it, it, usually that's one, one of the things you don't hear about. We will talk about electricity, we talk about water, we talk about skills and so on and so forth. But these sort of non, uh, non well, conspicuous factors also uh, help to deter investors, especially those who work on timelines and so on and so forth because time is money and a lot of these investors believe in time and how they use their time and their money. So we should also tackle this. The government must be us and tackle this. We should have an efficient, efficient public civil servants who deal with these investors and push through their papers. If they, they, want that, they want later to reward them, that's a difference. But to ask upfront for some of these monies and so on really discourages a lot of very serious investors who 
don't really uh, indulge in these corrupt practices. Now, Dr. Safo, finally, just before we go, um, we had some comments from the Minister for Trade, Harun Aidusu, mentioning that the country lost some $2 billion due to the Supreme Court case. How do we recoup this money back, and how do we bounce back in terms of business and investments as a country? Yeah, I, I think what, what, what he says is to some extent true, but it's, it's a microcosm of the larger pro problem which I have defined, you know. Uh, I mean, the uncertainties and uh, a lot of investors are jittery when it comes to Africa political uh, environment, and they think this will bring some disaster and, you know, their investment will be wasted and so on. But I think by and large, Ghana has been lucky, and they, even under those circumstances, uh, there was a lot of confidence in the Ghana economy and the social mm. and political environment not to warrant, you okay. know, a deterrence of some sort from people investing. But it's part of the problem. But I think now that we are settled and there's a calm uh, environment, the government has to quickly work on some of the factors that have enumerated, you know, in order to put much more uh, confidence into the economy. The political system is stable and it's going to be mm. stable. But the factors that I've mentioned are crucial. Solving the electricity, water, infrastructure problems are key also to attracting and recouping the necessary investment that we need to attract to uh, develop our economy. Right. Thank you so much, Dr. Kweko Safo, international economist, for bringing us more in-depth analysis on this global competitiveness report brought out. And that will do for business later on in our subsequent bulletins. We'll be looking at more on the commodity and forex markets. That's it for business.